Hello, everyone. My name is Brenda Lewis with the Tulsa Regional Chamber. Welcome to the segment of the Bill Program, which is a series of webinars aimed at providing education and resources to small business owners and their growing team of leaders. Presenting sponsors for the Bill Program are the Persimmon Group and Security Bank. Thank you so much to these sponsors for making the Bill Program possible. An additional thank you for their generous support is to our small business benefactors who support and make the program of work possible for the small business connection. Those are Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, Exceptional Leaders Lab, Stride Bank, Southwestern Payroll, and TEDC Creative Capital. Today's segment of the BUILD program is entitled Communicating Your Mission, Vision, and Values, which will feature the expertise of Rosalia Cunningham, Chief Spirit Sherpa and Director of Organization Development at Hilti North America. Rosalia, thank you so much for joining us. I'll now turn it over to you. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Brenda. And it's a pleasure to be on this journey with you today in this BUILD program. I, I couldn't think of a better way to align with the Chamber of the Small Business Connection because we're in the building industry as well. We're helping to build a better future. And it's always a journey, as we say. So I'm so thrilled to be here with you and to share what I have and my toolkit with all of you. So without further ado, Brenda, are you good with me sharing what's in my toolkit? Which are a few slides, okay? But I promise to make it animated, interesting, and fun along the way because that's part of what we do at Hilti. So without further ado, it looks like everybody can see my slide. And just as I said, it's, it's our Hilti blueprint on building a better future. Now we communicate our vision, mission, and values are what I'm starting to call the VMV for short. And it's a journey. And we talk about everything is a journey with Hilti. And it reminds me when I started getting ready for you today, when I read, a, read up on podcasts, latest TED Talks, YouTubers, TikTokers, I've went out and looked at business journals, and of course, business school, um, where I you know, attended business school as well. We always talk about it's equally important to know where you're going and also how you're going to get there. And as I was thinking about that, I was like, you know, it reminds me when and I'm from Oklahoma, I'm born and raised in Tulsa, went to the University of Tulsa for my undergrad and went to OU in Tulsa, Tulsa campus for my master's in org psych. And it just reminds me when I was a kid and I always knew my parents every summer we're going to go on a vacation. And we always knew the destination. We knew where we were going, which I couldn't wait. It was Dog Patch USA for some of those. Some of you remember it was still around back in the day. And then, it, it, and then eventually it became Branson. And so it's always exciting because we knew where we were going. And then the next part was, well, how are we going to get there? Are we going to go through Eureka or Bella Vista or go through Kansas in a way to get there? And then what are we taking? And this is before we had words with friends that many of you have now is old school crossword puzzles, even before Sudoku was available. But it was always exciting to know we know where we're going. We're going to figure out how we're going to get there and what are we going to bring along? And so on our journey, Hilton, we do the very same thing. We want to talk about how are we going to get there, who we're going to bring along, and how we're going to do it. And this is where I'm so excited to share our journey on our vision, mission, and values. So as I click through, there we go. What I want to start with is the who. A little bit more about who is Hilti. Some of you may or may not know, we're kind of a well-kept secret in Tulsa, but we're definitely getting out there more as an organization and as a company. We're a privately held company. This is our founder, Mr. Martin Hilti on the left, and his son, who also is the governing uh, director of our company, uh, Michael Hilti on the right. And I wanted to show you this slide because this is when we brought all 2,500 team members back in the day in 2012 to Las Vegas because we wanted everyone to talk about and hear what's our vision, what's our mission, what are the values by which we're going to drive ourselves to get there. And I'm actually here, I don't know if my cursor should, but I'm right here in the center talking to one of our, our chief presidents about this journey. So a little bit more about Hilti. This, I love this picture here. It is very picturesque. It's very Cinderella-like. That's the castle where the prince and princess of Liechtenstein live. So this is what we call Happy Valley. And, and then these other slides here will show you that we were found in 1941. We are in over 120 countries represented and we have more than 24,000 employees, almost close to 26 now. We've really grown and we are in the construction industry. So when I said earlier, we build a better future, we really do help build a better future with our tools, services and software in the organizations. 
throughout that we partner with. And so who is Hilti? I thought since we are very family oriented, you'd like to have a little glimpse into the family tree. So here in the center is the, the Hilti family themselves. Um, what I like to point out is Michaela talked about the sons, but now the daughter of Michael Hilti, she is now coming on as one of our chief executives in our organization. So we're in our third year generational of living these values, these very family values that we now have spread out across thousands and thousands of team members. And a little fun fact, this here is the first house. This is our corporate office. In the garage of this house is where M Martin Hilty started our company with his brother, Eugene. So to give you a little fun fact about before we were close to the edge of Tulsa, here's where we were over in Europe as well. So yes, we're very family oriented and we feel that Hilty, our team, our people are part of this family too. And here I'm just giving you a glance of the con, the, 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 the team members that we have that go out to the customers go directly to the customer. We are their best partner. And the point I want to highlight is that we have over 300,000 daily contacts with our customers. All the more important to be aligned on where are we heading, what's our vision, how are we going to get there with our mission, and how are we going to, and what are we going to take with us to live it, which is our values. So when you have 60, 70 percent of your team members on the forefront with our customers, all the more it's important to know what is this journey that we're on. And then here's just one more glimpse of our culture. This was in the backdrop of me on stage earlier, but I want to talk to you about what Martin Hilty was saying decades ago. He was saying things. He wanted people to have fun at work. He wanted a company climate where every individual person knows that they're contributing. I mean, it's just like a family, right? You get together. You want to make sure everybody feels like they're part of the family. You're all enjoying each other's company. We still espouse that to today. And it's by which we live this journey of our vision, mission, and values to help us do that. And then Michael, his son that now is our honorary chair, talks about it is a quest, but it's a journey. And that's the point I want to make is that wherever you're at, it's ongoing. It always grows and always is nurtured by the people in you. So it's always great to know your destination, but you know what? When you get to grants, there might be other things you're going to do, right? So this is why it's so important to really know where you want to go, your desired state, but also be aware of, you know, it can grow and develop as you grow and develop as an organization. And the other last bit I want to just talk about our company, we, we're definitely there for our customers on the job site, but we're also there in the community and in the world at large. We have a very strong affinity to building a better future off the job sites as well. And these are just a glimpse of some of the other things that we help, um, we help foster in the um, in the industry and in the community based to live in this vision of building a better future. We want to create better opportunities for children to learn music or to have affordable housing for their parents by which they can have nice safe houses to live in so they can be you know, well rested when they go to school or do whatever they're going to do the next day. And then also from an economic standpoint, we want to help the surrounding environment and communities also help build their better future too. These are types of things that when we talk about our vision, we want our team members to know, yes, it is the vision of tomorrow. What is beyond the pandemic going to bring? What is 2025 going to bring or 2030? But also what is it going to bring with the world around us? And that's what gets people excited about getting on the bed. For everything that we do outside of the company building a better future, they're contributing with their hands or their hearts through the process. So these are the things that continue to help motivate our team members on what our vision is. So let me tell you more about what that what that looks like. Now, this caring culture, a lot of pieces to it. I'm just going to pull this up because when I was preparing for Brenda, it really got me more aware of there are a lot of things that incorporate the culture. Yes, the vision, mission, and values are the foundation of the driving force, but how do you keep people aligned? How do you keep your team members capable to do these things, give them things in their hands to do, and how do you keep their hearts intact and motivated and inspired and passionate? along the journey as well. So as I click here, I just wanted to show that it is all about, yes, starting with the family, the foundation is core, values and so forth. And also we have to be, be aware of and recognize and appreciate when our team members are doing the right things by living our vision, mission and values, make sure we do uh, activities 
what we call events or team camps to keep it alive and well, this journey of living our vision, mission, and values, and doing it all with inclusion, being respectful of everybody's great backgrounds or diversity that they bring. How do we make sure people feel they belong a part of what this vision is that we're building together? And with that, our customers are very much part of it too. Like, as I was saying, the community at large and our customer, we, we share our vision, our mission, and our values. That's what really helps us to, say, to sustain this and keep it going. Hence why we call it our really our caring culture. Now for today, our topics are the, the three core pillars that we designed today, Brenda and I, was first ours. We're going to tell you a little bit about our strategy because if not, you're not going to know our destination. So a little bit about our strategy. And the, at the very top of it is our brands is being an industry leader and being a community partner with you. And then also, yeah, then what's our culture? How are we going to get there? And then we're going to share our vision, mission, and our values. And then I want to talk about our people that we're going to have in the car when we do this road trip together, when we get to our final destination. And we call these our ACEs. At Hilton, we got a bazillion and one acronyms, okay? And I'll share with you what ACEs are. But there are 18. The A stands for we want our team members to feel aligned. They have the vision they have in their head. It's one of the H's we say about where we're going. And then the C is that they're capable. That means we give them things in their hands that they can build this better future for our customers, yeah, but also for them, for them personally and for their own families too. And then the E stands for engaged. And that's the other H, that's the heart. How do we bring that passion along in everything they do throughout the journey at Hilti? So that's what we'll talk about today. So without further ado, let's get into the alignment piece of how we do this. So I mentioned earlier, business practice, business schools talk about there must be some kind of template or structure by which companies need to kind of take their journey. We all have business models. I know your company has one as well. We have one too. What I like to talk about is our business model first is our, is our mission. This is what we strive to do. And the key thing that I really am happy to share with you is at the forefront is our people. It is your purpose what we call vision and is the values because with that that it's hard to get everything else going but once you have your people aligned on where you're going and how you're going to get there and then you have the strategy of all the tools that I was talking about you bring along your favorite pillow and blanket and so forth I mean these are things you bring along in the journey to really make the journey very worthwhile for you and for your customers and so forth so your your business model may look a little different look similar what we really hope is that as you start to look at this, that you have your people as part of this. And as we've done it, we positioned it in the driver's seat in the very front to get us to where we're going. So now, once you've figured out or positioned that, then what is the, what is the strategy overall? And, and it cannot work all on its own. And so as I click through here, the point on this slide is, is on your far right is a tower. We like our analogy, so we're building a better future. We have a tower here, and at the very base of it is our foundation, and I know you can read it, and I know it by heart, is that we have a caring and performance-oriented culture. They both work in tandem. We care for our team members so they can perform at their very best. It's not that we want them to perform because we care about the company's you know, bottom line. That's not it. We care first, and that way they can perform at their best, Therefore, their customers and our future is really made whole. So if your foundation is strong with that, then we say, well, then the next important thing is, oops, sorry, real quick here, is that then what's the roof? Because that's the next important thing we feel. That's what shelters you from everything. That's what protects you. And that's our vision, which we call our purpose. We call it purpose because we want people to feel like my purpose today is to get out of bed and to you know, make a better future not feel like, oh, geez, I have to get out of bed. So we want them to feel purposeful in what they do. And yes, that's the vision, but we'd like to use language that really resonates with everyone. So our purpose here is, is that we passionately create enthusiastic customers and build this better future. And then all the other pieces in the middle that you see as part of this is perfect. That's the other things that your company, my company needs to do in order to make sure that we handle and execute this building a better future. What I'm going to do is break it down and talk about the two, the roof and the foundation for you on how that fits into our strategy. 
The other thing here, when you see a lot of numbers, and um, Brenda and I were going to share this deck with you, is that there's an investment, an investment of time. We spend over 18,000, almost 19,000 working days, meaning we pull people off the job site, out of the office, out of the cube, from behind this computer screen now, and get them in front of myself, what are as you heard my title, Chief Spirit Sherpa, or my other nine Sherpas on my team, to have these conversations about what are we doing? What can we do to help you feel like you get to go out of bed and build this better future? How's our vision resonating? Does it still make sense? How is the mission? Is it still going to get you to where we need to go? And our values, are we still living by our values? We have these pit stops or these team camps very routinely and ritually throughout the course of the, the year or months to follow. So it is investment of time and does take some, some monetary monies as well. But there's also things that we did and we started that did not cost an exorbitant amount of money that we still was able to get the journey going, which we'll talk about. But I felt it was important that you know that there's an investment. It's not only money, but it's also time and talent of your people, which you can own and you can manage in a very, uh, in a very good way. Now back to our foundation. So as I was saying, at the, at the core, if we're building a building, we say if the, if the foundation is not sturdy, then everything will, will crumble. So we feel that the foundation of our caring culture with our ACEs that are committed to driving the culture is very key. And as you break it down, as I shared earlier, then the roof by which protects us and keeps us really in lockstep with one another is this purpose. And while our purpose is we passionately create enthusiastic customers and build a better future, we also talked about it's, it's about this customer satisfaction, because if we can continue to create this loyalty and this engagement with our customers, then we can create this value that's sustainable, that we keep this company going. We've been here since not, we've been going since 1941. We would love to be one of those companies that hit the century mark and beyond and so forth. And we're destined for that. Our legacy is to be that. So we need to ensure that we have this vision, mission, and values that keep us going year after year, decade after decade. And you're familiar with your friends here at the chamber and also the Small Business Connection. I want to share with you, this is not uncommon. Everybody has a roadmap or blueprint. It's however you choose to get that direction. I love the chamber. When we look at their overall, their vision, which is ours, build a better future, is this, we are recognized as a global leader and economic and individual prosperity. That's you. I mean, they want to be there for you as, a, as an overall uh, vision. And then if you bring it closer to you, to home with what Brenda and her team does at the Tulsa Small Business Connection here, I mean, they're talking about they want to have a program that serves the voice of small businesses. I mean, wow. I mean, that would get me out of bed each and every day if I knew I was going to be the voice and help foster the voice of you and have this one voice for small businesses. That's where you start. You go with the heart. You go with what grabs you with your vision. And then you start figuring out. Everybody's excited to get to this end journey point. Now, how are we going to get them? You start working on your mission. And some other, and I always love this because I do a lot of different talks about this as well with other companies. And I picked some companies that you're familiar with. Okay. So like McDonald's be the best quick service restaurant experience ever. And I grant you, I, as soon as I like put it in the speaker, I get to the window and it's there. I mean, it's those kinds of things when you can deliver and your teammates know, okay, when Rosalie comes on in her truck to pick up her food, she's going to expect it. That's how you get everybody bought off one. Okay. Um, and then Tesla, you know, creating the most compelling electric car. I mean, is it not compelling or what? Now they're doing electric trucks. I mean, they're going, they're doing other things that's like taking people, you know, out into space and so forth. That's what gets their people excited about. Yes, I can't wait for our mission. So I know where we're going. So I can't wait to get there. And there's just many, many more here. The point is, is that make it your own, just like we've done. Make it your own by which everybody can come along and can live by that. And through that is then what are, what's the compass? I, I love when I was doing some pre-reading and one of the, the pre-questions was, you know, what's the compass? How do you keep you in track and online? And our compass here at Hilti that points to our Hilti true north is our four values. And we say, these are things that make us tick. Find out the things that make you tick and help your teammates tick on the journey. 
We say, again, another acronym, but if you keep it catchy, it really helps people to really resonate. So the T in our tick that makes our heart tick for Hilti is teamwork. You're not alone on an island. We're all together. The I is integrity. We want you to bring your full self, bring all your, um, you know, the, the honesty, be it, you've heard this saying, you know, when nobody's looking, that's the type of situation we want to be and you do the right thing. We want people to feel like you can always do the right thing, always challenge and question whatever you're doing because we want to do what's right by you, your family, organization, and the community. And then our two C's are we want you to be totally committed to what you're doing. Let us help you find that commitment. If there's things in your way, obstacles or roadblocks, we can help you further your commitment. And then courage, by all means, we want you to fail, fail again, fail again, just get better and better each time you do. Because we feel with those risks, you're able to grow and is our company. And we say these things that make us tick, these values are the true bosses in the organization. We don't necessarily feel like everybody has to be always looking to the boss to get answers. If you live by these tick, then you're going to live by what we want you to do. And you don't feel like you're having this hovering kind of environment on or on you or big brother type syndrome as well. So that's how we utilize our values on the journey. And then to summarize, to bring the strategy together on our vision, mission, and values, then we want our teammates to have a one page. They have this either at their desk. They have it. Uh, we have posters in the organization. We have it painted on the walls just to help people remember all the things that we espouse to. And we love how we can have everything on one page, everything you'll see. And we were one of those companies, our vision, believe it or not, was like five paragraphs. I mean, you could, you didn't even remember the first paragraph. You already forgot the first paragraph as you was reading the second, the third, and the fourth and fifth. And we said, we no, we've got to get everything that we believe in on one page. What does it mean? And so living the core values, as I mentioned, our compass, as I shared here, so they see quickly and plainly, this is what's going to make me tick. Here's my boss that I'm going to align to each and every day. And then over here, then it's like, what's our vision? What's that purpose that gets me out of bed? It's that building that better future, creating enthusiastic customers. And then our mission is we're going to do it with, with self-responsibility. We're going to take responsibility for ourselves and for our business. We get to be entrepreneurs. We get to bring our brains through the door. We don't have to check our brains at the door. And then, of course, in the very end of it all is know you have a team and work together as a high performing team. And to us, this is the mission, mission of bringing everything together in our organization. So alignment is critical. I hope you, you see how important that is for us to get people doing what's best by them and by the organization. I have this clear alignment on where we're heading and how we're going to get there and what do we need to bring along which is the values, our mission, and our, our vision. Now, how do we help actionists bring it to life? And so that's the capable part of our ACEs. And so our culture tool, toolbox that we talk about is a lot of different um, interventions or imperatives that we have. But we really want to break it down and it's the way we do. You may hear me start talking about it's the Hilti way. We want our teammates to know that whatever we do is the Hilti way of living, loving, leading, all those things, learning. And we actually break it down to how do we want not only work, but play together. We think it's very important, just like families are. We feel we're a big family. How do you balance the work and the play? And of course, the customers, they're part of that, that three-legged stool too. Two, the stool will not stand up if one of the legs fall off. So how do we continue to create that engagement with our customers. It's how we treat each, each other with respect, attentiveness, um, understanding people come with all good intentions. And how do, you, how do you act your own self? How do you represent and bring yourself every day to the team? How do you play the team? And then ultimately how we all win together and build this better future. So let me take you through activities that we do to bring this more to life, to make it more sustainable that you might find that you do or you would like to, uh, to uh, consider as well. First off, you heard my title. I'll bring it back together again. So Sherpas are guides, and it's, we're paying the utmost respect and homage to the proper uh, Nepalese community that actually are, by their ethnicity, are Sherpas that are ones that are 
very skilled in mountaineering and they really truly help those who want to to climb the summits get get to the very top of the summit to have success and what we're saying is we want to have the summit of building a better future and we need guides to help us or coaches so we played off the term of sherpa business coach or culture guides so that way your team leader or the executive management team is there but even as a team leader you need support even as executive, you need support and your team members need it as well, because all leaders are also working on the strategy going forward. And so how else can we help support and nurture this environment in our culture? So at Filty, we have a team uh, or a family of Sherpa business coaches or culture guides that help with that. We also uh, lean into our human resources department our training, our safety, team leaders as well. So even in your organization, you may utilize, and we do, current team members that want to take on that extra responsibility to help keep this journey going. And let me tell you what we do and show you. This slide just continues to show how we continue to grow our journey. As I was saying, we have a desired destination, a desired journey, but as the, as the economic times change, um, as the world around us changes, the pandemic's a good, you know, is a good latest variable, then we also need to ensure that we keep our, our journey alive and well. And this is just one way of how we continue to grow our journey. So let me just up some pictures. I'm just showing you lots of different pictures representing lots of different ways that we go out to our team members and really help ensure that the vision is intact and know where we're heading. They understand what are the tools they need to do so and what are the aspects. There we go. So they're all blown up here. So as you see this slide later, there are numbers and there's letters. What I want to show you is that when we started a formalized culture, so we've been in this for 20 years on this formal culture, but prior to that, as you saw, we had other types of culture programs, but we've really landed on this whole, our culture journey. And now we've taken step-by-step step our teams through various different team events, team workshops, team sessions. We like to call them team camps because we're using the analogy as you climb the summit, you take a base camp, you learn something, you get grounded, you, you, you smell the air, you get acclimated to the oxygen, and then you continue to your ascent. And so that's what we do with all these various camps that we do. Now, as a global company, we do this with all the 26,000 team members I was sharing with you earlier. And then on a local level, when you look at the ones with letters at the end, there are times when you talk more about our strategy, where the, the recession in 2008, 2009, and 10 really affected us. We had to regroup. We also need to talk about the strategy going forward. And of late, let me share with you, the pandemic really threw us in kind of a tailspin, as maybe some of you, is this whole how do we need to be more in the moment, be more mindful about our, our work-life balance and our self-care and our team care? And now we're talking about there's so much change about us. The next camp on our journey is called Change to Grow. So the mission needs to continue to always move and grow with how your vision is moving you forward. So that helps your teammates feel the capability, hence why we need this group of Sherpa coaches to do that. And it's an ongoing process. So I just want to say is it's not a one and done. It's ongoing. We come together, we regroup, we touch bases back with the team, and we start again with camp two, three, four, or five. And our words from our teammates, I just want to show you they're smiling, they're laughing, they enjoy the team camps. But I think most of all, they really appreciate coming together and making sure that they're really coming along with our journey. And now the last part on our ACES is the engagement. So aside from these formalized training sessions that I just shared with you, as a company, we also have reached out and figured out what else can we do in the communities? What else can we do to help foster our families? Because our families support our team members as they're part of the Hilti family. So this is a calendar to give you an idea. While we like to represent all the different affinity groups, whether it's LBGTQ, the Black affinity groups, women, Latina, Latinx, we're always ensuring that representing all the different groups. We also want to represent our communities. We work with United Way. We work with Habitat for Humanity. All these things don't cost really anything but your time 
and the talent of your people. And this is when we say, team, we're building a better future. We are. That's what this is here, a team like we have to build a better future for someone else, the organization. When we talk about we want our team members to feel like they're part of a family, then we have family events as well. So just to share with you that what you do, and in fact, no matter how big or small, will have an impact on your vision and your mission and your values going forward. And I like to land on this one because we also individually work and support our team members too when they're going through personal situations on their journey as well. And, and Wells, my dear friend here, is that we really help reach out and support him while his mother is going through a really a, a really a terminal type illness. So again, it just takes the caring, leaning in and having conversations with your teammate to have your vision, mission, and values really come to life. Cannot say enough about listening. When, when we thought that the company shirts that we all wear were red, that everybody loved them, they liked the red, but they didn't like anything else. If you were have, if you were in a baby kind of way, maternity-wise, it didn't work. If you're a female, again, those simple things can help your teammates feel like they're part of a greater vision of what you're trying to do. And then celebrate, find the little things. We like to celebrate people leading, we like to celebrate people leaving legacies, people working in the community, people making customers happy. That doesn't cost anything. Those small plex rewards go a long way to help our teammates feel like we are building this better future. And then our people tell us, we do surveys. We highly encourage getting the voice of your people on a regular basis to know where you're at. So now our A team, and I've talked about how it's so critical that you bring, I know my little crayon, my little crayon picture, but what I'm trying to say is ensure that you're helping feed their brains, right? Feed their head with the things they need to know, which for us is the vision, vision values, and mission. And then of course, make sure their heart feels part of the process and give them the things they need in their hands. And as we end up here, the best learnings I could give you is that start at the very top, walk from the top, start with your leadership, Come along with what you're trying to do. And I have this last slide to share with you is that we live by John Carter and his eight steps of leading change. And what I've done is taken his eight steps and really just kind of helped you to figure out how can you start? How do I actually get this journey started? And so create the shared vision. We talked about Hilti building a better future. We talked about the chamber. We talked about small business. If you have yours, great. Make sure it still is living, that it works. Then once you do that, get a coalition, find out who's going to come along with you. Get your HR, get your other leaders and, lead, and supervisors on board with you. And then start communicating. And then that way, your people will start feeling empowered to know we can do this, create systems and process, whether it's performance appraisals, recognition, appreciation, or compensation. Make sure everything is aligned that doesn't get in the way of living your vision living through your mission, and of course, bringing the values to life every single day. And then always regroup. It's a feedback loop. We call it the breakfast of champions. It's You don't get it done today. You feel like it's going to live forever, forever. Like I showed you, 20 years. It's a living document we always go back to. And then just please know as you go through this, here's a quick summary, is that Hilti, as your community partner, we will be here every step of the way to support you. Oops, excuse me. There we go to support you on this journey as well. So we're gonna have some Q and A's next, which Brenda is going to lead, but I also want you to have this too. So please take a snapshot if you wanna further talk about how you can do this in your organization. So wonderful. Thank you, Brenda, for this time to run through 20 years of our journey in like 40 minutes. So I hope it's enough to get it going, get the steps of further closer for your, for your clients and your constituents from Tulsa community. Thank you, Rosalie, and feel free to leave that up here for just a few minutes if you'd like. As we kind of go through the Q&A, or um, I know this is Zoom, so people can um, actually pause it and take the contact information. But we do have time for a few questions, and so I want to make sure to sneak these in. So what if in an organization there is not a Sherpa? Uh, they don't have a Sherpa. What what should they do? I most most companies, when I get that question, they kind of answer it for themselves. They're like, you know what? I'll go to HR. Actually, I love HR. I, I grew up in HR. That was my first role, my first 10 years. I've been with company for 30 years. I failed to mention that earlier. 10 years in HR, went abroad, vice president of HR for the United Kingdom, came back to run this job, this role, I should say, lead it for the last 20 years. 
And I have found go with the person or the group that has the passion. It could be somebody in accounting. It could be somebody in the in another part of the organization. It could be in sales, but really go with somebody that will be a, a sponsor or an advocate that create that one or two people. Now it probably will be somebody in the people department. If you're really small, we know that is that's the operation person, and he or she does accounting. They do you know HR and they do safety and training. But definitely go with somebody that's going to be really passionate about to get this going for you. And it could be a shared role. In the very beginning, I was doing multiple roles as we were launching this. And then as it grew and took roots, then we added headcount. So you start with your own resources. And then you see if you need to upskill somebody in HR or take somebody and develop and grow them into the organization. It just starts with one passionate person to get alignment with your executives, working with your executives or your leadership team to start the conversation about where do we want to take us for our vision, mission, and values. And so we talked a little bit about the cost. Um, and so can you tell us a little bit about what is the cost? The, yes. So the when you get into the actual, um, the, the precursor, the pre-work, if you will, is mainly just time cost, getting the executives together, getting the, the, the leaders, if you will, to craft this message. From there, it's the cascade, it's the communicating. And we went directly to our people. We decided this was not a memo. This was not the team leader doing it. Hence why we said we need more resources. Hence why we came up with the Sherpa community is that we started meeting one-on-one. -on -one. We wanted people to we wanted to read the body language. We didn't want to just hear what they were telling us, but we want to actually see how they were feeling about it. And we wanted them to start experiencing it too. So if we say, what does teamwork look like? We actually had team building activities. Oh, this is what teamwork is. I thought it was about me winning. No, it's about all 10 of us trying to figure out how to put all these blocks together and build a house, okay? So the cost will start coming in. We start bringing the people together. So, but we start using it in our own conference centers. Um, you know, we just use our own facilities. And then eventually we're like, we need to have overnights. We're trying to cover a lot. And we also know when people break bread together, <laughs> they become closer together. And so then we started going off site to uh, venues, campsites, um, you know, hotels, wherever that might be, what's ever available to kind of give you that vibe of being away. We're starting to create that family feel. Airbnbs we use too. So it doesn't have to cost a lot, but when you start bringing your teammates together, you do need to think about making some investments, but you can start small, start in your building and work your way from there. Headcount, again, as I was saying, you don't need to hire someone, use somebody, give them a promotional opportunity, grow them. Okay, maybe give them bonuses for doing this, but again, you don't need to really invest in the headcounts to do these kinds of things in the, in the very beginning. And the other cost is opportunity cost. While you're not, while you're still paying your teammates to be off site with you, because hence they still continue their salary. But, you know, those are the costs that they're not out making widgets or delivering or selling. But no, that's a short term investment for long term gain. So try not to get yourself in the box and think I can't take them out of the field. I can't take them off the phone. I can't take them out of the cube. Um, we feel if you can do this once every 12 to 18 months it's really neg negligible when you think about the 12 hours you would spend over a course of 18 months. So always have that kind of mindset to help you understand the value of the cost and the, or the investment, as we like to say. That you just provided so much insight in there. Thank you so much. And so we do have time for one final question. Okay. okay. We sure do. So for our small business owners that maybe are wanting to rewrite, revamp, maybe even create their uh, vision, how can they communicate their vision? What's the easiest, simplest way? The easiest, simplest way is, of course, after they've crafted and they believe and it gets the buy-in, is actually have, to, to get it out there, is the owner, the champion, the culture champion of the organization, start going into the organization deeper. Now, but let me back up. When we say they've crafted it, they've already done a state of the union. They've already created a video. They've got to make it compelling. So you got you need to launch it. That's what we did. We had the CEO, we had the CEO and, and his team. It was our CEO at the time. And then since then, we started bringing in live examples of what that looks like. So really get a video, some kind of piece 
that really shows people, you know, in the process of doing this, because they're going to go, oh, wow, we already do these kinds of things, but I see now you're bringing it together. After that initial message goes out in a very hype, fun way, then you're going to say there, and the next step is coming to a store or coming to, you know, uh, to you soon will be your team leader, and they're going to have a lunch with you. And you're going to talk about it. You know, we're going to do some breakouts. Um, again, low cost, super easy, quick to do. And then you can start seeing how it starts to play out in your organization. Probably do is, the next thing I would do is then do a nine month or a year survey, do a pulse check, see how are we doing either verbally or in a written format. So you can come back in the second year. So here's our first year results, first year successes. And here's what we're going to do going forward. So that first 12 months, to launch it and to kick off the second year will be very pivotal that you do. Thank you, Rosalia. You are a wealth of knowledge and thank you for sharing your contact information and feel free to stop sharing your screen. Thank you. Okay, so I will. There we go. <laughs> but thank you so much for, um, again, for your time this afternoon um, or today in general. You're welcome. Thank you for having me and our company on the journey. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's all the time that we have uh, for now together. Rosalia, again, thank you for serving as our expert for this session of the BUILD program called Communicating Your Mission, Vision, and Values. Again, thank you to our generous sponsors who made today possible. To our viewers, thank you for joining us. We hope that this session provided you with knowledge and insights to better support your small business now and in the future. Please check out future segments of the BUILD program on our website or on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Thank you.